personal development is, is nothing more than personal development. You need to find what makes you tick. You need to find that book. You need to find that person. You need to find that mentor. You need to find something or someone or somewhere that allows you to be the best person of you. Wherever you feel fear, that's where you You've got to become towards. the person that will attract over 200 different cognitive biases. The real work in any business is thinking. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the FLW Podcast. My name is Cody DeGraff, and I'm here with my co-host, Gabriel Klingman. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in. Today is going to be a blast. If you could just hit that subscribe button, it would mean the world to us. Right back to you, Code. Awesome. And guys, we are so excited to have the host of all things real estate, Mr. Kyle Siebeth, on the show today. And for those of you who don't know him, Kyle has been labeled the number one top producing real estate agent in the nation by Wall Street Journal, Real Trends, as well as the Keller Williams Realty Program. And now he's pushing his game to the next level with Century 21. So we're super excited to hear more about that. In addition to all of this, um, he's just such an awesome dude with sharing his success and knowledge with many people coaching other people on how to build their empires in the world of real estate. So Kyle, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm doing all right. Thank you guys for having me. Um, and that was a great introduction. So I appreciate that. So Kyle, what we like to do in the very beginning is, is we like to play this game called the, the five rapid. And it's basically just some kind of would you rather questions just to kind of icebreaker this whole thing. So are you down with that? I'm down. Let's go. All right. Awesome, man. So the first question is, um, if you were to have a house, would you want to have it in the mountains or would you rather have it on the ocean or in the city? In the city. Mm. Awesome. Okay. As a fellow New Englander, do you want Tom Brady back or are you fine with Cam Newton? Cam Newton is pathetic. Do you need <laughs> Brady back? I think Thank Brady's you. playing tonight, no? Yeah, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know can't. that because I'm, I'm looking at my fantasy football and I see that he's playing. So <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. Brilliant. Cam Newton's All right. a bum. Ah, oh, dude, I know I'm, it's so sad, but it's true. Yeah, I feel that. All right, so number three, uh, uh, if you were to be, you know, when you're pushing your real estate, would you do you enjoy pushing it in Rhode Island more or in Boston, Massachusetts more? So I don't do anything in Boston, so much more Rhode Island. Okay, hmm. awesome, sweet. Okay, uh, if you that win the lot, that fair. If you win the lottery, are you taking your kids to Disney or Universal Studios? Disney. My kids love princesses. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. My my daughter's the same way. <laughs> they love right. yeah, they love princesses. But I, I mean, yeah, so Disney. It's beautiful. All right. And then the last question, number five, is uh spending a day with Michael Jordan or spending a day with LeBron James? Ooh. You hit a sauce bar right there. That's a tough <laughs> question. I Ooh. mean, I'm a big LeBron fan. I'm probably one of the big I love me some really? LeBron, but mm. I think Jordan paved the way and Jordan has that mentality that LeBron doesn't have. So I would say Jordan. Who do you think is the goat out of the two, actually? You think it's Jordan? The greatest yeah. of all time? Yep. Yeah, I'm with you on that 100%, man. Fascinating. Well, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, so to jump right into this, uh, we always like to start off with your story. How did you get to where you are? What's your background? So uh, I got started in real estate about nine years ago. Um, went to, let's just back up even further. Went to high school here in Rhode Island, um, played basketball there, went on to college and uh, played basketball in college at a division three school on the Western Mass. After that, graduated, thought my career path was in finance, went to Boston, the big city, uh, hated every single second from the time I started did it for like 10 years, commuted back and forth from Pawtucket to Boston and, you know, just kind of job chase for a while, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> chase mm -hmm. one job to another to try to make five grand more here, seven more grand here, whatever, whatever, whatever. And just kind of chase, chase the money, chase the dollar. Um, didn't really understand it. Didn't really get it. Just, just thought that was the thing we were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. 2011 got kickstarted in real estate, um, started in this game in 11 and built a business from, you know, really trying to just get one extra vacation a, a year into um, into what it was last year where I did 517 transaction sides. Just got a passion yeah. for real estate, really like enjoy the whole game. It's not about the dollar. It's about helping clients, you know, buy and sell, fulfill their dreams, accomplish a real estate goal that they never thought they could. Um, so work a ton of stuff with buyers and sellers on a regular day-to-day -day basis and have grown from a seven deal per year producer 
to over 500 and just continue to push the envelope and continue to do um, sell at a super high level. Wow, dude, that's amazing. And, and your success is obviously just so evident. I've shared, I've, I've watched a lot of your YouTube uh, channel and your show that you do, which is phenomenal. Um, and I was just curious, just to kind of like ask more of a personal question in the real estate world for yourself. What was it like selling that first home for you? Do you remember that at all? Ooh, I don't know. No one's ever asked me that. What was He's the good first with the home? questions. Huh? <laughs> He's good with the questions. That question was amazing. You know what? What was it like? It was probably like, wow, this is pretty cool. Like I just did that. Um, you know, <laughs> I didn't think I could do that. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I just sold the property. Wow. And I actually did pretty well for myself on this. This isn't bad. I can get used to this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I remember the first deal I ever did, I think was this kid named Raul that I went to high school, played basketball with. And I never will forget. That was the deal. I mm. called his loan officer every single day for an update, which is the most annoying thing you could ever do on this planet. I was that guy. Yeah. I was that annoying man that called the loan officer every day and had absolutely no clue what I was doing, but wow. thought it was going to close early and just every day harped on the agent and the other lender. So yeah, I was, I was that guy and I strangled the deal, strangled it <laughs> yeah. from beginning to end. That's so fascinating. Uh, so present day um, with COVID, what are some of the major changes and how you've had to approach your real estate? I think the biggest change is just being cognizant of, of the sellers and buyers that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Some mm -hmm. people will cough in your face without a mask and not think twice. Mm -hmm. Other people, you can't go within 20 feet of them and they're worried they're going to get struck with COVID. So it's the ability to understand the difference of mindset in the buyers and sellers that we deal with. And I think that that's been like a huge change for us. It's a sea change in the overall business. But at the end of the day, um, I think it, the business remains somewhat consistent. We're there to service our clients. We're there to help people buy and sell. Uh, we just have a couple more hurdles now than we had before. It's so crazy what's been going on with this whole thing. I mean, have you guys been kind of taking it a different direction with like doing online showings and stuff? Or have you remained doing things in person typically or? I mean, everything's still done in person. I mean, how do you buy a house without seeing it? Right, I mean, exactly. some sellers are like, well, why don't we do virtual showings? Well, why don't you, why don't you go buy, uh, I don't know, why don't you go buy, go on vacation and do a virtual vacation? I mean, because you don't do that. <laughs> you want to yeah. do something. You got to be there. You got to see it. You got to touch it. You got to feel it. You got to, you never know. <laughs> yeah. you buy a house like that? Like, yeah. that just doesn't work like that. Mm. So in that case, if I were just getting started in real estate today, um, what are some of the things that I should be focused on given the COVID atmosphere? Are you a buyer, seller, or an agent? I'm an agent. If you're an agent just starting today, you mm. need to educate yourself on the process. You need to educate mm. yourself on the, on the market overall because you need to understand what kind of market you're coming into. So mm. more importantly, you have to understand the supply issues that we're having in the overall real estate market. And if you can't comprehend that, understand that, and have the ability to make that into your current business and transcend that, then mm. I think you're going to struggle in this market. Mm. Yeah. Now, what about from the buyer's perspective with the market as it is right now? Just out of curiosity. Buyers are at a huge disadvantage. There's not a lot of stuff to buy. So buyers are competing against number and number and number of other buyers looking for the same thing. So at the end of the day, if you're a buyer in this market, you need to really try to understand, you know, what's my price point? What am I looking to get? And how high am I willing to go over asking price to get what I need? Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, that's so, so good. So to round this up then, what about sellers? If you're a seller and you have anything you want to sell, get it on the market. Mm. Timeliness is everything. Efficiency is everything. Get that property to market as fast as you can. It's not a function of getting it perfect like it was in the past. Mm. It's much more a function of timeliness. Mm. Yeah, no, that's so good. Yeah, no, it makes so much sense too. And it's crazy how people have just been like actually selling their homes and then going into rentals lately too. It's, it's that's amazing. That's a smart play though. That's a smart play. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, if you're a seller and you can sell and not have to go rebuy or repurchase or uptrade or downtrade the whole the whole totem pole game, um, you're in a really good position. But if you're a seller and you have to buy, you're in the same position as every other buyer. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. 
So, you know, I, now I do have more of a personal question. This is kind of getting a little bit out, out, out there, but like being in this industry, you know, there's a lot of things that are definitely out of your comfort zone, uh, you know, getting started in this industry. Um, you know, at such you, a fast pace as you have. Yeah, exactly. And so I guess my question to you is, is, do you mind kind of sharing maybe the last time that you had done something maybe that was out of your comfort zone? That's a great question. Um, I would say this year, I've, I've moved way out of my comfort zone in the last mm. year. Number one, I do a lot of video stuff. I never did video. I never did TV shows. I never did radio, advertising, commercials. Yeah, um, yeah. Took a big step. That was like step one out of the comfort zone. Step two was my transition from Keller Williams to Century 21. And yeah. why was that out of the comfort zone is because I moved from being just an individual agent who slung property around here and there and helped people sell and buy now to a broker of over 75 agents um, within, yeah. within our lovely state of Rhode Island and, and Massachusetts in a two and a half month period. And on top of that, took over a position as a coach for Century 21 to grow their co coaching program. So at the end of the day, like the comfort zone argument or the comfort zone piece for me really has transcended a lot of the time. Mm, wow. Yeah, and it truly is amazing. And I want to just remind everybody that's watching this podcast um, or listening to this podcast to just check out um, your website. And because it truly is amazing, the stuff that you share on that, um, it's it's called All Things Real Estate. Is that correct, Kyle? Yeah, that's the name of the show. And it's a show hosted by me and really just trying to focus and educate the public. Mm, Anything awesome. possible we can educate on regarding real estate. I think that's what we're looking to do. Mm. what's one of your favorite uh, aspects of the show? Cause you said that's something new to you. So what's one of your favorite things that you're learning about doing a show? So the, my favorite part of the show is, is having different people on all the time mm. and understanding what they are and who they are and what they're all about. So for me, it's, it's bringing on a diverse group of, of people on the show or guests, I guess you would say on the show and then digging into what makes them tick, digging into what they know about the real estate market and how they can help other clients and set buyers and sellers. Fantastic. What's some of the best advice that you've gotten and abstracted from the people on your show? I think the best advice that I've gotten is that everyone has different advice. <laughs> what I mean by that is everyone has a different way to look at things. There's a million ways to skin a cat. There's a million ways to do so many different things. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's how do you do the things that you do best, mm -hmm. better than anyone else? Mm -hmm. So you need to find, you need to kind of fine tune and figure out what that is. And once you figure out what that is, you pour what I call gasoline on it and you take that thing to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that. really a, uh, a situation where I think a lot of folks struggle is a lot of people call me up and they're like, hey, I want to be like you. And I said, well, I, I don't think that's the answer. I think the answer is you want to be like you. You got to wow. be the best version of you. Don't be like me because you're not going to be me and I'm not going to be you. So why don't you focus on being the best version of you? So how do Good you stuff. find, how do you help people find that what they're exceptional at, that one thing that they are or should be known for? How do you help people find that? I mean, I think first and foremost, you kind of have to get to know them and understand what makes them tick. And I think everyone comes into this game that I'm in and they say, well, I want to make a lot of money. Well, that's not the reason you enter the game. The reason you enter the game is for the challenge. The reason you enter the game is if you want to be great at something or, you know, if you want to just ho-hum and go along and go through the motions, that's a different story. But I need to know that that mindset. I need to know that drive. I need to know that determination. What is it that makes you tick? Mm -hmm. What is it that pushes you over the edge? What is that hurdle that you can't get over? How can I help you do that? Mm -hmm. And and I can't teach you work ethic. I can't teach you heart. I can't teach you determination. But what I can teach you is I can teach you things that I've utilized in the past to help me, quote unquote, be successful. Um, and I think that's important. That's so good. Oh, dude, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, there, so I've been in the direct sales industry myself. So I've had to, you know, I've dealt with people similar to how realtors would deal with people selling homes and whatnot. And there's one thing about the team building aspect too, that I noticed is it's so hard to keep your, your personal life, emotional estate, and like out of your work life, emotional estate, and uh, keeping that positive mindset. So I guess my question is to you is like, how do you maintain that posture, that emotional posture? Yeah, I think way too many people struggle with that. Yeah. I think way too many people can't compartmentalize the two things and mm. say, it's a work day. It's work time. We need to focus on work. Yeah. It's family time. We need to focus on family 
or vice versa, or there's there's a lot of what I call noise that gets in the way and blocks people's uh-huh. ability to succeed. And yeah. I think it's that noise that you know it's almost like the the Charlie ba- the Charlie Brown character that has the little Linus. He's yeah. got the 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 thing of uh, the dirt all around him, and he just kind of carries it with him. Yeah, and I exactly. think there's a lot of ninety nine percent of people are Linus, and the wow. reason is because they can't get that mentality. Like they're not focused. They don't have blinders on. And yeah. that doesn't allow them, you know, and people look at me like I'm a weirdo, to be honest. I get it all the time. Like, what kind of weirdo dude are you? Like, what's wrong with you? And I don't think I'm a weirdo. I just think I have a different mindset. I have a, I have a, I tick to, I go to a different beat, right? I, yeah, I drum totally. to a different beat and that's okay. Um, but it's just what makes me work. Like my, you know, that drives me. That's what, that's what makes me go. Mm-hmm. And with that being said, I mean, do you have any like uh, maybe recommendations of books or different personal development maybe that you would recommend to people to take in for that, to build that mindset? Yeah, I think personal development is is nothing more than personal development. And what that means is mm-hmm. I think at the end of the day, you need to find what makes you tick. Yeah, that's good. You need to find that book. You need to find that person. You need to find that mentor. You need to find something or someone or somewhere that allows you to be the best version of you. And for me, there's a couple things that I do. I don't read. I can't read for shit. I don't have time. I don't <laughs> like to read. I can barely, you know, that's just not my thing. I'm educated, but I just don't read. I ADD kicks in. But for me, it's watching a quick video here and there. There's a couple quick videos that I want. I watch and it'll like fire me up. There's a couple quick scenes I could YouTube and it will fire me up. So those kind of things like mm. personal development. Yes, you can read, you can get analysis, by you can get paralysis by analysis, unfortunately. But yeah. I think it's important to have an intuition and also have something that drives you to push you a little further. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, that's, you know, for me, that comes down to like watching certain videos, uh, watching certain scenes, catching up on some different things. Mm. Yeah. And that's Absolutely. so good. And it, okay. and it translates too in the videos that you create for your, uh, your YouTube page and your different podcast. It's phenomenal, dude. It's inspirational stuff. It's unbelievable. Yeah, no, thanks, man. I mean, I, I do, I don't know if you follow me on Facebook, but I do a morning motivation video pretty much I every do. day. I do. I, I, yeah. It'll always pop up. Sometimes I'll be working. I'll be like, Oh, here's Kyle, man. He's going. And I'm just <laughs> get all excited. So <laughs> it depends. It depends. Like today was okay. If I'm, it depends how crazy I let the noise get in the way. So yeah. if I let the noise from work get in the way from my video, my video's effed up. But yeah, if exactly. I don't and I just rock and roll, I'm rocking. So we got uh, two questions left, and this one is going to sound like a super far out in left field, and that's because it is. So answer it <laughs> with whatever, however much honesty you would like. Um, if you can imagine that you're at the end of your life, right? You're on your deathbed. You got your friends, your family, those closest to you around you. What is the last piece of advice that you're going to give them? I think I think my answer is you only get one shot at this game called life. Wow. Yeah. So you either you either make the best of it or you regret it. And I think I've been in many situations where I could regret where I was and what I was doing, and I made a change. Mm-hmm. And I think those change knocked on wood so far so good. Yeah. Um, but I think that one chance that you get you can't really change it. You only get one chance. So you either make the changes and adjustments or you, you continue to regret everything you do. Mm -hmm. So good, dude, unfortunately we're down to our last question, but um, it's just what's next for you, man. Can you kind of share how you ending 2020? How are we climbing into 2021? Just what's going on? Yeah. I mean, so 2020 would love to end um, in the top 10 in wall street journal this year with COVID has been a tougher year than last year. Uh, Volume has been down as far as like transaction side. So if I can be, you know, if I could be one, that would be great. Top 10 would be awesome. Uh, if the brokerage could end with a hundred agents um, from the time we started in the middle of July would be fantastic. And, and just end on in, in a healthy, positive spirit in a, in a mental space. That's, that's very healthy looking forward. Awesome, man. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, I look forward to continuing to follow you and your success and your team's success. So thanks so much for coming on the show, Kyle. We really, really appreciate your time.